Hi folks, Nicole from iPad Calligraphy here. Today I'm going to show you a method for vectorizing your Procreate artwork without leaving the iPad. So rather than using uh, image trace in Illustrator and the need for a desktop, we're just going to stay within the iPad. Um, we'll be using three different apps. We'll start in Procreate to create the raster lettering and then we'll import that into Adobe Capture, export it, and then import that into Affinity. There is a reason I've chosen to use Affinity for the refining of the vector artwork. Uh, you could potentially use Vectinator if that's your preference, which is a free app. Um, there's a reason I've chosen Affinity, which I'll get into a little bit later. Great, so let's get into it. So here we are in Procreate. I've got a piece of lettering that I've done earlier. It's uh, got a little texture on the stroke. It's best to work with black and white to have a really high contrast and something that's fairly simple. So let's give this a go. Uh, the first step is to export this as a PNG. So if I go into the little wrench icon, the actions tab and the share tab, I choose PNG and I'm gonna save that image to files. So if I go save to files, iCloud Drive, it's called digitalscribes.png and then I choose add. Right, so the next step is to go to Adobe Capture. So we'll go into here. Previously, I think uh, you needed a Creative Cloud subscription for Adobe Capture, but that's not the case anymore. You can use this for free. It's a free app. So we're just going to tap the little um, image icon up there and choose files because that's the location we saved the file so there it is there digital scribes so I've imported this and uh, this is ready to go we can just tick tap that um, tick and as you can see this is like keeping the texture it's looking pretty good there is the option to choose this smooth here and I'll show you what that does sort of removes some of the textured outline and tries to create a smooth shape but I'm just going to keep it as it was and we're going to do the refining in the next step so we'll save that. Then we just want to get back out onto our gallery screen here and we can see this is saved as, a, it's called Shape 3 by default. Export as and we'll choose SVG and then we'll choose Save to Files. So I'm going to choose iCloud again and Add. So we can see that's been sent to iCloud. The next step is to open Affinity Designer from Affinity, we're going to choose that little plus icon at the top and import from cloud. Then we'll go to the location we saved it. So if you remember, it was called Shape 3, and there it is. So we now have vector artwork. So this is as, as simple as it is, really. This is ready to go as far as a vector goes. We can further refine this, and I'll show you how, but for all intents and purposes, this is vector artwork, and it was as simple as that. So um, that's as close as I've found to the image trace option that you can do via Illustrator. Uh, so Affinity, um, if you remember uh, earlier, I said you could use Vectinator if you like, but there was a reason I chose to use Affinity, and I'm going to show you why I really enjoy Affinity. Um, for editing vectors, it just makes it really easy. If we select the vector and choose the pencil tool, if you see down the bottom, there is a sculpt option. So as long as that's selected, you can come in here and edit the shape of that stroke just by pulling along the stroke itself. So you just sort of draw along to refine the way that that stroke curves and it just makes um, it's really intuitive and it just makes it a really nice experience and you can zoom in you can edit nodes individually still just by selecting your node tool you can change the curve of that shape or even delete them the less nodes the better really um, if you can if you wanted to go to that detail but having this sculpt option in the pencil tool is just a dream it really makes it so much easier so that's the main reason I choose to use Affinity. It is a cost, but it's worth it in my eyes. And it's not a subscription, it's a one-off cost. So one thing I want to mention just before we go is if you want to be able to rotate like this, um, there, is, there is a setting that you have to change in order to have that on. So if you go into the little cog icon under tools, there's allow canvas rotation in all tools. So that needs to be on in order for you to rotate. 
And the other thing I do really love about it is its back button or undo is exactly the same as Procreate. So there's there's no kind of real learning curve there. That's um that's awesome that we can just you know undo by the tap of two fingers, just the same in Procreate. Excellent. So I, I hope you enjoyed that method and this video. Um, there's a box to sign up below to be notified for my new course, which will contain a module on vectorizing your artwork. So if you want to deep dive into that a bit further, just be sure to sign up below. Otherwise, thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.